Hey guys, welcome back to another video with the Financial Controller. I am back here with my wife, Maria, who comes from a tax uh, background, a big four tax, and I come from an audit uh, background, a big four. Uh, I transitioned to work then in private industry uh, and then worked my way up to a controller position. And today we're answering a whole host of questions that you've left in the comment section on my previous videos uh, regarding you know, making a move from tax to other areas in accounting, making a move from public accounting to private industry, big four to non-big four or the other way around. So we'll cover all of that and I invite you, if you have any questions similar to this, you know, interviewing career moves in accounting or finance, go ahead and leave it in the comment section and we'll try to address it in a future video. So without further ado, let's dive right in. All right, all right. The first question from our viewer. I have had some recruiters tell me that it's a waste of time to spend more than four years in public accounting because your skills become very specialized and not applicable to an industry role. Granted, they were trying to persuade me to take a job offer. What are your thoughts? Okay, so this is a really good question. Uh, this is someone who works in public accounting in audit. Uh, someone as a recruiter reach out to them. Uh, we call them headhunters, right? They reach out to them and they try to get them to accept the position. So your skepticism here is in the right place. Your skeptic, this person is trying to tell you that the grass is greener on the other side to try to close the deal and get you to accept the job. And it's true. Okay, so let's unpack it a little bit because some of the stuff that they're saying, um, the recruiter is saying is true, but also some of it is them trying to them trying to close the deal and get you to um, you know be interested in this job that they're offering you, right? Because they make tons of money out of a deal like this. So um, you know when you work in public accounting, um, you will get calls from a recruiter all the time from outside headhunters trying to get you. I get these calls all the time. Maria gets these calls all the time, and you know you have to kind of look at it with skepticism, right? Because they're, they're they're working for their best interest to get you to accept the job. So. What they're saying here is that, you know, the recruiter is saying, if you work in public accounting for more than four years, you get super specialized, you know? It's true. So, and that is true, right? But is that bad? Is that negative? Uh, this is the real question here, right? And this is relative, right? So it's relative to what you're trying to accomplish, right? Uh, getting super specialized isn't a bad thing if your goal is to become a partner, for example, right? So if you want to become a partner at a, a public accounting firm, you know, spending more than five years is the way to go. Use five, five, 10 years, 15 years until you become a partner. A lot of people make partner at the 10 year to 12 year mark, sometimes 15 years. Uh, so this is a really good goal to have, right? Um, also getting super specialized um, is good if your goal is to then work at a more niche type role like maybe an SEC reporting position at a public company later, right? So when you work in audit, um, you will work in an audit program and you work on uh, translating or interpreting the accounting pronouncements and rules um, and applying them and writing memos on how they apply to each company specific industry, right? And this is the technical side of thing. This is you know, what they're referring to are getting super, as getting super specialized. So it's true um, when you work beyond four years, you know, you typically now you become either a, you know, experienced senior at four year uh, or a manager in a public accounting firm, especially big four. So then now you're in charge of interpreting accounting pronouncements and standards and applying them to uh, company specific situations. And that is technical and super specialized. Um, you know, then you can apply that to becoming, like I've said, like something like a financial reporting director or SEC reporting director, someone who knows the pronouncements. Okay, so it isn't such a bad thing. Uh, so, you know, maybe then the way to look at this in another way is that, yeah, if your goal is to go to private and become a controller like I did. So for in my case, for example, I worked at PwC for two years in audit um, and then transitioned out to work in private industry. Uh, what I advocate in the channel is to spend a little bit more time than two years. Um, so maybe three years at a minimum, three to five years to get the right amount of experience and then jump out to private. So if your goal here is to uh, go to private ultimately and you know take the controller route or a VP of finance route, uh, global controller for example, um, then leaving a four year mark is good because you already have the right experience from um, you know working with different companies, analyzing financial statements, 
tailoring an audit program, understanding how an audit works, how financial statements work. Um, then when you go to work on private, if your goal is ultimately private, you will learn the other uh, areas in accounting that you need to learn. Operational accounting, such as payroll, uh, procure to pay, which is P2P, order to cash, billing. A lot of these things you'll see in audit, but when you work on them on the private side, you will get uh, you know the right amount of experience you need to become, for example, a controller. So it depends on your goal. Again, in a nutshell, if your goal is to become a partner, um, then you know being super specialized is good, right? If your goal is to become an SEC reporting director at a public company, getting super specialized is really good. Um, but if your goal is to become a controller at a you know private company um, or a company on the medium size uh, side, then you know jumping out to private after four years is you is know the right move. Is yeah. the right move. Yeah. So. Okay. All right, we have another question. Um, Bill, I started my career in global workforce mobility industry as a global compensation coordinator and I'm about to take a new role as an accountant. I am a CPA with master's degree in accounting and finance. I know my career journey is kind of awkward. Would you suggest to land a senior position in Big Four, if possible, or regional accounting firm to hone my technical skills and earn a stamp of approval on my resume for future career development. Okay, uh, good question <laughs> and a nice dramatic, nice dramatic <laughs> entry to the question. Okay, so let's unpack a couple of things here. Okay, so this is somebody who works in private industry right now, right? Um, as an accountant, previously as a global composition coordinator, now as an accountant. And um, you know, they have he or she has a CPA and a master's in accounting. Hallelujah. Awesome, nice job getting your CPA. Uh, you have a master's degree in accounting. Great. Now, uh, I know my career journey uh, is awkward, and I think what the reference to awkward here is because um, what they're thinking to do is go from private industry to public, right? Usually, it's the other way around. You go from you start in public, and then you go out to private industry after that. But this, they're trying to do the other way: go from private to public. And the other thing to mention here is that they're talking about, um, you know, honing on and technical skills, which is true. When you go to work in, in public accounting, you're going to get more exposure to technical skills. What we mean by technical here is the ability to interpret accounting standards and pronouncements and apply them to specific situations, right? Um, so true. And then they mentioned stamp of approval on the resume. Also true. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you see it. Um, when you work in public accounting, especially big four, and you put that in your resume, it gives you a stamp of approval with hiring managers. Um, so that's true as well. And so it's a career development, stamp of approval, a couple different things. Awkward, maybe a little bit because you're going from private to public. Uh, the thing to mention here, and we were talking about this, uh, me and Maria, is you know going from an, an accountant, position, accountant position to a senior in public is a little hard. Yeah, it's not a... I guess, right? It's yeah, it's it's difficult because you know you're going from. There is a lot of expectations for seniors, right? Because uh, when you're starting uh, at the big four, you start as an, uh, uh, right out of college, right? You don't know anything. You work as hell, and you always have that senior that give you instructions and give you specific tasks, and you learn your way and and till you become a senior, right? Like after two three years. So, so really to jump out of private, to go to be that senior in public accounting, it will be very hard because the seniors are like the... The most amount of, work, most amount of yeah, burden have, or work falls on them. Yes, that's true. So um, that will be very challenging, I guess. It's a, so, it's a difficult move. Because it's easier to be a staff and then experience a staff and then earn your senior role and then that first year senior is always hard so to go from a private to becoming a senior at a public company i find it to be yeah a little bit challenging yeah the other thing to remember too is that you'll go from having one client to many clients right yeah. when you work in private industry your only client is the company you work for your boss right the company you work for now instead of serving one client you go and work in public you know you're gonna have a book of business yes right? and then you have different expectations like you have many staff that you have to you know supervise review work and you have a lot of clients and you have to you know be able to juggle all that yeah um 
but of course you learn so much and if you are able to do it just go for it and we are proud proud of you you can yeah, do it definitely hard work so nothing you know nothing good comes easy right so um the options here and you can choose your poison right so big four you mentioned big four that's one option another regional accounting firm also a good option um you know when i look at a resume and assess it as a hiring manager I am, you know, big four sounds shiny on the resume, but also regional accounting firms are just as good yeah, as big four. Yeah, it's just the experience that you get. And then when you are, I guess, in the interview process to be able to talk about it and yeah. uh, shine with whatever you know and all the experience that you acquire working in different positions and in different companies. Right? Yeah. And then, you know, your other options, so the option A, big four, option B, uh, regional. You know, option C, you mentioned you work in private right now. Um, you could stay in private and work your way up the ranks. You're an accountant, you can um, become a senior accountant and then begin to fill in all the buckets that you need. If, for example, a controller, I'm not sure from this question, what is the ultimate um, career tra trajectory? But if it's a controller, let's say, uh, then you just need to fill in the buckets of the areas of knowledge, like we said, O2C, P2P, R2R, the areas of knowledge, fill that in. Yeah, I guess it, it depends of when you are talking about career development. Okay, yes, whatever you set out for you to have, right, in your in as your career, just try to see, see watch videos like this to know what you need to do to get there. I guess. Yep, I agree. Good question. Yeah. All okay. right. I have another question for you, Bill. Okay. What if I work in tax, no audit for public accounting? What jobs are available for to me in private? I also already have a CPA and willing to also get a CMA. Okay, great. So tax question, it's good. We don't get a lot of tax questions. It's awesome. So all right, let's let's look at what they're asking. Um, do you work in tax in public accounting, right? And they want to go to private. They want to go to private. What um, is? What are the options? How? Okay. The good thing is that this person has a CPA license. Yeah. This is great. Okay. So CPA license is going to give you a lot more flexibility um, when you go to work in private. You know, you're not going to be only you know, pegged only in tax, but you could do also some other things besides tax, which we'll talk about. Okay. So you know, when you go in private, when you work in when your background is big four tax, the most obvious thing that you can be doing is also tax. Okay. Right. I think that um, early on, like first you need to know like how far are you are in your career. If you are, you start starting tax and then you try for one year, two years, and then you say, oh, you know, this is not for me. Yeah. Jump out and try something else. Right. Um, but it's re you really like it and you really enjoy it. You're learning. You specializing one year, two years, three years, you become a senior, a manager. And, and it's really very hard, I think, once you are in that, you know, like the partner track or the director track um, to actually jump out of uh, public account and go to private. To private. Um, I think that you need to know early on what you want to do. Um, and the, the sooner the better, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah, because, yeah, true. The more specialized, the more advanced or progress you get in your career, say, like a director of tax at Big Four, um, you know. The harder it is to switch careers. The harder it is to switch careers because, in general, when you switch careers, the way it goes is that you're either going to take a pay cut or, or a title cut, some kind of cut. Yeah. Okay. So, like Maria is right, like, I think, like, try to, you know, have a soul search early on and talk to a lot of people, watch a lot of videos like this one, understand what do you want to do, um, tax or accounting or FP&A, and just try to kind of uh, do the right things early on, right moves to get you. But with a CPA license, I think you just yeah. have, you know, whatever you want to do, you can do it. It's yeah. just like trying to plan it, I guess, right? Yeah, and with a CPA license, we have a CPA license, so now instead of tax, you could also transition to private to work in other areas, like uh, con tour controllership. The only thing is you just have to fill in the buckets. We talk about the three buckets that you need to have uh, in controllership, which is order to cash, procure to pay, record to report. Um, I'll link a video up here to breaking down these areas. Um, you know, you need to fill in these buckets as you uh, transition to private. Uh, make sure you get some roles that will expose you to these things so that you can fill in these buckets. And if you're interviewing for an accounting position, also make sure to check my website for the night before the accounting uh, interview um, online course. So 
I think that's it for this video. And again, if you have any questions, leave it in the comment section below. We'll get to it in a future video. And if you like this video, give us a big fat thumbs up and we'll see you in the next one.